The following KQED production was produced in high definition. just how many fish there are in the sea. Well, there are more than have ever been caught anyway. Remember this for a start. There was a time, not very long ago, when people thought the bounty of the sea was limitless. The health of the ocean was taken for granted, and everything in it was ours for the taking. Into the cans. This commercial slaughter of the innocents is pretty brutal work. What an indignity. Today, when we gaze across the ocean's surface, everything may appear to be the same, but looks can be deceiving. Underneath the waves, the ocean has been changing, and in most cases, not for the better. What we've realized over time is that the ocean isn't limitless. It's the blood supply of the planet, and it's being affected over and over again again, by death by a million cuts. So it's human disturbance, it's pollution, it's development along our shores. So we've constantly been impacting it and we're realizing that the ocean now is in trouble. It's not a subtle problem. Scientists predict that 75% of the fish species in most of the world's oceans have been fished to their absolute limit. And over the past 50 years, the planet's big fish, like tuna, swordfish, and marlin, have declined by 90%. The question is, what can we do? Nice job. For nearly 150 years, America has protected its most sensitive and spectacular landscapes as national parks. But we're only just beginning to preserve vital ecosystems at sea, and California is at the forefront. So one of the overarching goals is to protect the biodiversity in the marine ecosystems in, in California waters. And by definition, that means that you're really trying to protect all the species in California waters. The concept is to create a chain of off-limits zones called Marine Protected Areas, or MPAs. The most restrictive will be marine reserves, where all fishing, both commercial and recreational, will be banned. Scientists working on the plan hope it will help depleted fisheries bounce back. So in California, we're trying this experiment with marine reserves, marine conservation areas, uh, because of the past way we've managed fisheries hasn't worked to the level we wanted it to work. That we still have fisheries in decline. So we're trying a new approach in hopes that we will have more fish in the future and that the ocean will be able to rebound. The strategy is not to close the entire ocean. Instead, the State Fish and Game Commission wants to protect and preserve some of the vital breeding and nursery areas in state waters out to three miles so that stressed species can repopulate. The whole idea is to get the most bang for your buck, to take as, you know, a, a little area, but get the greatest benefit from that small area. And the goal is that this is a, a place where species can reproduce, can rest, can rebound, and then feed the outlying areas that aren't protected. So the, the outlying areas then become richer and more diverse. In 2007, the Fish and Game Commission set aside 18% of California's ocean waters from Santa Barbara to Half Moon Bay as protected areas. But how can anyone tell which places to protect? And how will we know whether the plan is working? The only way to be sure is by getting your feet wet. Off the coast of Monterey, researchers are exploring kelp porous to see how the protected ecosystem is responding. In order to get a true baseline count of what's down there, researchers methodically record everything in a two-meter wide area of water called a transect. From that, they extrapolate data on the entire population of life in the area. They'll count each of the different algae that are along the bottom, the seaweeds. They'll do the same thing for the invertebrates, and then they'll swim along and count each of the fish species they encounter on their transects. Then from that, we can determine, are, are the protected areas actually allowing fish to get more abundant, bigger, so that they'll produce more young to replenish populations outside of the protected areas? 
But simply declaring and monitoring a protected area isn't enough. The system will only work if fishermen buy into the idea, obey the boundaries, and help enforce the rules. Initially, when you restrict fisheries from these particular areas, um, there may be a hardship to those fisheries because they have to shift from areas where they've fished historically to new areas. But in the longer term, by protecting the production of young, the protected areas will actually be an economic benefit to these fisheries. Scientists work with fishermen and other groups to determine the boundaries, but it's not surprising that roping off areas of the ocean doesn't sit well with many who fished for years. MPAs are a, a solution in search of a problem. Larry Collins is a commercial fisherman who runs his boat out of San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf. Before the new push for MPAs, he and other California fishermen already had plenty of restrictions. For example, certain numbers or entire species can only be caught during specific fishing seasons. Many fishermen maintain this management system is working. I've been fishing out here for 25 years. And in that time, I have never seen this ocean as healthy as it is right now. I want the next generation to be able to come out here and fish wherever the fish are. And if you make little boxes out here and say, you can't fish here, with my luck, luck of the Irish, that's where the fish will be. We don't want to close off the ocean. As Colin sees it, the problem isn't overfishing. It's bigger than that. Commercial fishermen, we make our living from a healthy environment. When there's not a healthy environment, we don't work. And that's why we don't go out here and kill every last fish. You know, and that's why we believe in fishery management. But fishery management and MPAs are two different things. Historically, government fishery managers have set limits to protect one species at a time. MPAs are designed to protect entire ecosystems, every fish, every sponge, crab, worm, and plant. What we've realized over the years is species-specific conservation is, is only looking at one piece of the puzzle, uh, one slice of the pie, because a species is dependent on a variety of other species for their existence. For fish, for example, fish will use uh, other organisms as habitat. A sponge may become a habitat for a rockfish, and it never leaves that sponge. So there's layer upon layer of species interdependence. So if we only protect one layer, we're not protecting the whole puzzle, the whole pie, uh, and we're not gonna be as successful. We found that we're a lot more successful if we look at take more of an ecosystem-based approach. Further north, off Marin County, state fish and game task forces are still working to establish the boundaries of the protected areas. These scientists and other stakeholders aboard the NOAA research vessel Fulmar are studying the region in order to decide where to draw the lines on the map. They're combing the surface to monitor seabird and marine mammal populations. These baseline studies are the first step in determining the best places to preserve. The concept of ecosystem-based management has proved to be successful in other parts of the world's oceans, but up until now, nothing like this has ever been tried on this scale in the U.S. Scientists and fishery managers will be eagerly watching to see how the preserved underwater wilderness responds. Places around the country are really looking at California as a model. I mean, that's why it's so exciting to be part of this whole process, is that it's really creating a global model to determine whether this particular approach is going to be one of the best conservation approaches available. My favorite thing about my job is seeing the wildlife come back. That really is. It makes me feel like, yes, we can make a positive difference. Not everything is negative. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org quest.